Now that you have mastered setting up the basics of the Panasonic AG-UX90 camera, in this video you'll learn how to manually control your video picture. The first thing you want to do is make sure you are operating with the manual control enabled. There are three ways to control the zoom. A wide and telephoto rocker on the right side just above the hand grip, a smaller version integrated into the top handle, and then a manually controllable ring on the lens. To manually set your focus, change the button from A, which is automatic, to M for manual. Look for MF to appear in the display, indicating you are in manual focus operation. Then press the focus assist button to help you set your focus. This is critical in high definition and ultra high definition production. Focus Assist shows an expanded view where you can see a bit more detail and also gives you the option of seeing a color overlay, commonly referred to as peaking, indicating what lines are sharp and therefore in focus. You can set that color and whether you see just the zoomed in portion, the color overlay, or both from the camera's menu if you want greater control of this feature. Use the focus ring at the front of the lens to control what appears in focus using the Focus Assist as a guide. You can even move the zoomed in region around when using the touch controls on the LCD screen during focus assist. If you are unsure whether or not you are in focus or need to quickly change focus while it's still in manual mode, pressing the push button for autofocus quickly allows the camera to automatically focus for you just that once. If you want to instantly set yourself to focus on an object that is an infinite distance away, just push down on the focus button and let it automatically return to the M position and it will do just that. If you wish to focus on an object in an extreme close-up, press the user button number 2 to enable macro focusing. Moving on to iris, the iris is used to control the brightness of the shot. Press the iris button to control the iris manually. Then rotate the iris ring to control the amount of light you let into the camera. Notice the histogram in this sample view. That is showing the brightness as the horizontal axis and the number of pixels at that brightness as the vertical axis, making it possible to see the overall exposure for every part of the image. If you want to clear that from your camera's display, it's under the menu and display settings. When initially setting up your iris, make sure your gain is manually set to zero and your shutter is in manual mode. If you see a shutter, that means it's in automatic mode and may compensate your desired iris setting as a result. This camera has built-in neutral density filters that allow you to cut down the amount of light entering the lens without having to adjust the iris, preventing from overexposure. This is helpful in that it allows for greater or finer control of how much adjustment you give the picture's brightness when rotating the iris ring. Basically, it's sensitivity especially when shooting outside on a sunny day. Notice that the iris remains at the same setting each time the amount of f-stop reduction is increased. If you find your image to still not be bright enough, even with the iris set to be opened all the way so that it is allowing as much light as possible into the lens, then you may need to add a bit of gain. Each time you press the gain button, you'll see the image become brighter. It ranges from 0 decibels at the low end, 6 for the mid, and 12 decibels at the high preset, unless you assign different values to each of those presets in the camera menu setup. What Gain does is simply take the image and make it digitally brighter, and that comes with a cost. The higher the amount, the more likely you'll be introducing some digital noise into the picture. Next, set your white balance by zooming in on something that should be white. Press white balance to switch between channels A, B, or a specific preset. This enables you to have fast recall between each in case you are moving between locations, for example, outside to inside and back again, or to another location that you know is lit with fluorescent lighting. In this case, the outside and inside would be your A and B channels, and the fluorescent lit room would utilize the preset set to 4200 degrees Kelvin. You can adjust the preset setting by pressing the front AWB button multiple times when on the preset mode until the number turns yellow. At that point, you can use the jog dial to scroll to the specific color temperature. 
Then press the jog dial again to lock it in. Once you are on the correct channel, A or B, you want to set the white balance of the object that should be white, which you previously zoomed into. Once you press the white balance button, press the AWB button that's assigned to user button 9 by default in the front beneath the lens. The white object should now appear to be pure white. You can cheat the white balance. The opposite of blue is orange, so if you wish for warmer skin tones during live productions where you can't adjust the color grading in post, use a shade of blue as the object you wish to tell the camera as being white, and watch the whites instantly become warmer in color temperature. This will also help save you time in post-production if you know where you want that look from the get-go. The shutter limits the passage of light, which is why it also can affect the apparent brightness of your video. Press the shutter button to switch to manual shutter mode operation. You'll see it no longer shows automatic shutter in the display once you do this. Adjust the shutter speed by rotating the jog dial. In this example, you can see how this particular array of LED lighting is causing a waving pattern. To reduce this, we'll manually control the degree of that pattern until it isn't noticeable by compensating for it with the shutter speed. This is commonly used in sports to add clarity to fast-moving objects. In this case, the refresh rate of the light is similar to being a fast-moving object. A byproduct of increasing shutter speeds is a loss of light, so you may find you have to then go back and open your iris more as a result whenever using the shutter speed. The optical image stabilization button turns on or off some built-in protection aimed at reducing the amount of shake resulting from handheld operation. See the difference with and without it? The LCD slash EVF button switches the display from appearing on the LCD screen or the electronic viewfinder. Keep in mind that motorized zooming and other automatic functions as well as the LCD can cause faster battery drainage. So when in the field, if you are nearing the end of your battery life and you want to maximize your uptime with that battery, try switching off the LCD screen. Finally, once you are all set to record your shot, press the red button on either the side of the camera or under the protective cover along the top handle. This will start recording. Press it again to stop recording. It is a good idea to check your footage to make sure your SD card is operating properly and to listen to your audio levels. Do a test recording and either use the playback option or the record check button to watch a few seconds of it making sure you're prepared to capture what you intend to at the appropriate levels.